as the sun rises on a new day, I want to ask, are they grooming your children to be confused about who they are, where they come from, and where they need to be? And is that potentially a threat to the future legacy of your family? And what can you do today to stop it right now? Well, welcome to Time Out. My name is Jack Vint. And I want to respond by reading a scripture in 1 Timothy 3.15, which says, You will know how everybody who belongs to God's family ought to behave. After all, the church of the living God is the strong foundation of truth. Herein lies our salvation, that your children, your children that make up your family, make up also the family of God, which is the church of the living God, which is the foundation of truth. And so if you uphold that foundation of truth, you will preserve your legacy forever. I'm going to show you this morning in a moment how you can do that but let me just take you to what happened this week something interesting Elon Musk an ex-South African he may not have been thinking about the Lord's Prayer when he was acting this week but he may have been thinking about his own prayer when he was thinking lead us not into eternal censorship but deliver us from the twits of Twitter. <laughs> and all chaos broke out because of him buying Twitter. Now you may say, Jack, why is it important for me to know about freedom of speech as a parent? How is that important to my children, my family? And that's a good question. Because you see, if you and I as Christians want to exercise our right to teach our own children what we believe the Bible says about them and who they are. Freedom of speech is critical. And if the world remove that, they can start to dictate to our children, your children, what they should be. And you know, uh, that takes me to another bunch of um, characters, excuse the pun, Disney were also in the news this last week or a few weeks because of their gender policies and spreading confusion in their own company and also amongst their clients. And so I ask, has the magic gone out of Disney? And instead of it being Disneyland, is it dysfunctional land? <laughs> and another that makes me think of another thing. Now, is Mickey Mouse going to undergo operation and become Minnie Mouse? <laughs> and if that's the case, uh, by default, will Minnie Mouse now be wearing the pants in the family? And God forbid what uh, Mickey Mouse will be wearing. <laughs> and if that's all a little bit confusing to you, that's exactly my point as far as what the world is trying to do to groom your children to behave in a way that will confuse them and potentially destroy their legacy of their children and their children's children. So we have to stand up. You have to stand up and say enough is enough. And that takes me to another scripture which is encouraging to me because the Bible says in Ephesians 3, Verse 14 and 15, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. You see, we came, your children came, your family came, not just from anywhere. They came from God Almighty, according to the Bible. They were named after God's own name. That's their family. That's their heritage. That's their legacy. And you know, Genesis 1 verse 27 says, God is not confused. When he created man in his own image, 
in the image of God, God created him. Male and female, he created them. So when God created man, he wasn't confused. He said, there's man, there's woman in the family, there's a husband, a wife, there's children, there's a boy and a girl. And whatever the world wants us to believe, that is their right. But you as a child of God, you as a believer, you can decide to believe what the Bible says about your family. And you know, we should not be surprised that Disney has stopped making films for children. We should not be shocked because they probably last made a film for children when Walt Disney was still alive. They are making movies now that can sell, movies that pander towards the, the, the preferences of the world and what they want us to believe, and that is their right. But it's also our right to say we will no longer listen to that propaganda and we will stand up for what we believe. So what can you do this morning? You say, Jack, what can I do to stop this? And so I'm going to start with the first thing that you can do. We must stop what I call the language of apologetics. The language of apologetics is always to, to apologize for what we believe. And we want to be so politically correct and so inclusive of everybody that we are actually compromise uh, our own values because we we don't want to we don't want to be misunderstood and i have said always said that convictions are normally drawn from our character whereas compliance is drawn from our preferences you see the world wants us to be compliant to what they believe and in doing so we you are in danger of losing your convictions so that's the first thing that you could do to stop the world grooming your children to act in a way that is confusing them and one day could destroy their legacy the second thing that i believe that we can do is what the bible says in proverbs i think it's 22 verse 6 uh, it says that um, train up a child in the way they should go and when they are older they will not depart from it you as a parent have the right you have the responsibility I have the privilege to train up my children which is a process in the way they should go not the way the world wants them to go but the way the Bible says they should go because they are part of the foundation a strong foundation of truth which God put them in to be the church of God and we must train them in that and of course we need to tell them not to apologize for who they are and for truth that they have in their lives you see there may be people that doesn't mean to say that they should they should uh, just fight and they should they, they, and they should reject people that are different to them it simply means they have a right to choose who they wanting to be because that is also their right and of course lastly I believe something that you can do and I can do is to expose our family our children to biblical values by through Christian education where we really believe that the curriculum that we teach them has got the core values of truth and of character where God is the center of that curriculum and of course lastly where you as a parent are the centerpiece to train them have the right and the privilege to train them in the way they should go so when they are older they will not depart from it my name is Jack Vint you've been watching time out thank you for that God bless you I'll catch you next week